with converting it to a sheet metal from a solid. Now we've looked at some of that workflow in a previous chapter, starting with a standard IPT and converting that into a sheet metal. But this also deals with other CAD product formats. So for example, Inventor can open up other CAD formats such as CATIA, NX, JT, IGES, uh, STEP files, SOLIDWORKS files, and these are native model formats coming from those other products, same as they can open Inventor IPT files. When you open these other file products, such as an IGES file or a STEP file, it's not going to have any of the modeling information history with it, and this is one of the limitations that all parametric modelers share in common whether it's ProE opening an Inventor or SolidWorks opening a, an NX file or uh, say ProE opening SolidWorks so forth um, we're gonna open them all as a dumb solid and basically what that means is there's no intelligent modeling history built into it you'll open it up and you'll simply see base one or base solid or base feature or something like that depending on the product you're opening it in. What I did here was I opened up an IGES file and it converted it to an Inventor IPT but again there's no modeling history. Now this is going to be a sheet metal piece but it opens it up as a standard IPT that's why you're looking at the standard IPT modeling ribbon. I need to convert that to the sheet metal when I convert it to sheet metal, Inventor's actually asking me to do something. If I look down in the lower left hand corner, it's telling me to select the base face. Now what that means is this is going to be a face that I tell Inventor everything flattens according to this face orientation. So what I'm going to do is just turn around here, spin around to the back and pick the back side of this face. When I do that, Inventor brings up the sheet metal defaults and it measures the thickness for that uh, material for me. And if this thickness does not match what the actual 3D model material is, then you will not be able to generate a flat pattern. Also, if there's material deformation in here, you won't be able to generate a flat pattern. When I click OK, now I can immediately go over, create that flat pattern, and again, because it's a uniform material thickness and my sheet metal defaults match the thickness of that material, 10 millimeters, I get a flat pattern. You can do this with anyone's format, again, so long as the material stretch is there and there is no material deformation. If it includes material deformation, then that area that has the deformation will not flatten. At this point, if you need to, uh, switching back to the folded model you can add flanges to this you can proceed with typical operating procedures to add flanges add cutouts contour flanges you can add to the information that you got from the supplier or the customer and again those additions will reflect in the flat pattern